Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I have three different things to talk to you about. The first one is there's a great sale going on for a limited time on Luminar Neo. Second thing is I got some free stuff for you. I got free presets and a free sky pack. And third, I'm going to give you some tips for editing your springtime images. Let's get into it. The first thing, as I said, is there's a great sale going between now and March 31st with Luminar for 30% off. There's a link in coupon code down below. They do pay me a referral commission if you use that link, but it's no extra cost to you. And in fact, you save money because of the coupon code. Anyway, it's a great deal and uh, that's for a limited time. So if you don't have Luminar, check that out down below. Now, the second thing is I've got a free preset pack and I've just launched that. Also a link for that down below and that's on my website that includes five free sunset skies. Let me show you what you can do with these presets in Luminar. I've got a couple of different examples here. This preset pack is called Spring Moods. Once you download it and add it into Luminar, it'll show up in your purchased section and it's called Spring Moods. And there's seven different presets in this pack. And it's a range of looks from uh, a little bit more muted to a little bit more vibrant and a couple that are kind of sunsetty. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. But you can see as I hover, pretty massive impact. And these are all about vibrant spring looks because it's springtime, at least here in Texas, and everything feels vibrant and like it's coming to life. So these really pop these images and give you some nice colorful looks. This one is a bit more sunsetty, as is that one. And you can just see that you get some really nice looks um, with one click. Now, of course, as you know, with presets, you can click to choose a preset and then go into edit. And in the edits tab, you can see what's included in it. And then you can go in and adjust that as you may see fit for any individual photo. That's, of course, how presets work in Luminar. So you know that. Let me show you an example real quick for those sunset specific type presets here in this pack because it has a really nice impact on an image like this. OK, here you go. Here's a couple. I'll just hover over these so you can kind of see what they're doing to the photo. That one's really vibrant and bright and warm, but these are the sunsetty ones. Now that's a lot of color. Don't forget if you choose it, you can select it and then you have this uh, slider here where you can reduce the intensity. So maybe that's better at 75 versus 100. Uh, this one also is a bit sunsetty, but it's a little bit tamer than uh, number four. So spring four is pretty intense. Spring five's vibrant, but not as intense. And then six and seven, you've got a lot of different options here to get some really nice looks. And again, these are free presets. These are just things that I've been doing over the last year because I like to thank you guys for all your support and engaging with me and all that. So if you don't have them, uh, by clicking the link below, you can get those. And uh, what I want to do now is uh, actually I want to show you the skies because it also comes with five skies. And these are the skies that are included. And these are fun, vibrant, and of course, colorful sunset skies. Because again, it's springtime. It feels like the world's waking up and it just felt like I'll just include some skies from my sky pack. So there are five different skies included. I will scroll through these here so you can kind of see what they look like. And of course, you know that in this sky AI tool in Luminar, you can add these and then have them as a quick one click addition or sky replacement in Luminar. So those are the five skies that are included as well. Check that link down below. And what I want to do now is get into a spring photo. I'm going to skip my presets and I'm going to go in and just show you some editing tips for a spring photo in order uh, to really make it vibrant and kind of pop. Now this is a field in the Texas Hill Country shot a few springs ago full of blue bonnets, which is the state flower. It's a bit too dark. So there's a few tools that I like to use to really bring a photo to life in Luminar. And as you know, I make a lot of videos about Luminar. There's a lot of great tools. I'm going to focus on just a few key tools that I think are really popular and are useful to me in uh, making the adjustments that I'm going to make to this photo. So. First thing I want to do is kind of balance out the light here in Develop Raw. And I tend to always start with Develop Raw. It's the uh, the most powerful tool. And it's the tool, honestly, that I use the most in Luminar because it just has so much capability and it gives me the ability to really make a huge impact on my image. So I've done some basic things here, just managing the light. But as you can see before, there it is quite a bit darker and a bit more muted. And after, with Develop Raw, I've been able to really have a nice, nice impact on adjusting the light. Speaking of adjusting the light, the tool that I generally almost always use second is Super Contrast because it does give you such a great uh, amount of control over the light in the image because it is contrast and it's based on the different tonal areas. As you can see here, as I kind of walk through this, it separates it by highlights, midtones, and shadows. It just gives you the ability to really impact the light. So I'm going to go through, make a few adjustments here. And as I do that, you will see the light really adjusting uh, in the photo. So 
Take a look at that. If I show you this before and after, before and after, everything's a bit more vibrant. It's spring and a little bit brighter. It's spring. And I just think it looks nice. So before and after. Now, speaking of before, before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and crop this image because I do want to get rid of some of that dead space. And that's something if I'm shooting a field of wildflowers, uh, I want to minimize the amount of dead space. So uh, I'm going to crop it just to get rid of some of that in the foreground. But another thing to think about that I'm not going to do in this video just because it takes a little bit of uh, time is clone and stamp down here where you can come in and you can take some flowers from some sections and basically uh, clone them and then stamp them into other sections. I've done videos about clone and stamp before. It's a useful tool uh, to allow you to go in and kind of fill in some of those spaces. Like I said, I won't be doing that in this video, but I wanted to point that out as a really useful tool to help you get the look that you want. Now, another tool that I love in Luminar and I use all the time is Accent AI. And I usually recommend that you're kind of gentle with it and you don't use it um, across the entire photo. In other words, you use it with a mask. But in this case, it works great. Again, going for a vibrant and colorful photo. And this is a tool that gives you so much control. Accent AI does like, I don't know, eight or 10 different things to the photo, really makes it pop. And then Sky Enhancer acts a little bit like a polarizer. So if you look at the top of the sky, especially, there it is a bit brighter and now a little bit more of that rich blue coming through it. So it's a great way to really enhance your sky, hence the name, uh, and give it a bit more vibrance in the image. Now, another tool that I love is Structure AI and I use it all the time and I always use it with a mask. And in this case, I'm gonna use a linear gradient, which is one of my most common masks that I use in Luminar. It covers a great area. You get this nice gradient edge where I can fade the effect into the distance. And what I wanna do is add a little bit of structure just to make that foreground pop because the foreground is really the key here. Uh, there's a lot of blue and I really wanna make that pop uh, and I wanna give it a little bit of that appearance of detail. That's what structure is so great at. Now I'll often we'll come back and use structure a second time with a linear gradient and put that in the sky and just drop it down from the top and use negative structure, something I really like to do. It just smooths out skies. And for me, those spring skies can have nice clouds in them, be a little bit of puffy, that sort of thing really looks pretty neat and I think that's a fun thing to do overall. And speaking of puffy white clouds, another thing I like to do is go back into masking and develop. I use develop all the time. Get a linear gradient, pop that into the sky. And what I wanna do here is just go into the whites. And I wanna add a little bit of white to that because I wanna pop those a little bit more, right? So I'm moving it quite a bit here, which every image is gonna be different, but that's a way to really give a little bit more oomph to those clouds is to just create a mask around them and then uh, increase those whites. So if you look at the before and the after, it gives it a nice little pop, which I think is awesome. Now, here's a trick that I think you're going to love. And I did this in my last video. So for those of you that commented how much you love this trick with masking, you're going to love it again because it's the same trick. What I want to do is really just pop uh, these blue bonnets. They're, they're white on the top and then blue everywhere else. So there's all this white on top, all these blue bonnets, if you will. Uh, but... I really want to make that pop. So what I want to do is get a luminosity mask, right? Because that separates tonal areas in an image. And this is one of my favorite, it is my favorite masking tool, uh, but I, I use it all the time. And what I want to do is just isolate the tops of those flowers. So everything covered in red is considered uh, either a mid-tone or a highlight because it's in this band that I've just shrunk, right? You can shrink this band to get less and less or more space in the photo. But all I'm trying to do is get the tops of those flowers. Well, I've done that by separating this uh, or using this luminosity mask, but you'll also notice it's picked up the sky. So here's the tip. And again, you, you saw, saw this last week if, if you watched my last video, but these masks are stackable. So you can back up out of that and then go get mask AI. And all you're going to do is tell Luminar, hey, pick up the sky because it identifies sky mask. Well, hey, I already had the sky, Jim, right? The sky was already selected on the luminosity mask. So all I did is double up. It doesn't make it twice the effect. All it does is select the sky. But the great thing about Mask AI is that when you click it again, it deselects it. So now I've just removed the entire sky from my luminosity mask, and all I'm left with are the tips of those little flowers. And that's really what I wanted to do because I wanted to come in here and I want to lift the exposure on them to give them a little bit more pop, right? So don't go crazy. You can kind of see that I've been able to isolate those. I'm going to lift those a little bit, like, you know, two thirds of a stop, something like that, and maybe give them a little bump in highlights as well. All I'm trying to do is make that white stand out a little bit and give it a little bit of pop. And that masking trick is a great way to do that. 
and I call that stack and subtract. You're stacking mass and then you're subtracting one. So before and after you can see they're a little bit more vibrant, which is the theme with my spring presets and a little bit more pop in those, which I just think looks awesome. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is play with colors. And this is something I do a lot on spring photos. Now there's a lot of blue and green, or it's almost all blue and green in this photo. But if you're shooting wildflowers or other flowers, you may have a lot of different colors. And that's where HSL component of the color tool comes in really handy because you've got eight different colors here. And I'm really going to focus on the greens and the blues, but also the yellows. So I'm going to start with hue. And with hue, what I notice is there's a lot of yellow here. So that yellow, I'm going to take this yellow and I'm going to move it more toward the green. And that greens up that yellow really nicely. Now, you wouldn't have to do this if you did the clone and stamp that I talked about earlier, where I just would stamp uh, you know, blue bonnets into that area, but I'm going to show you how to get around that uh, with color tools. So uh, in HSL, I take the hue of the yellow and move it toward the green, uh, and then I am take the hue of the green and move it toward the more cyan, right? So all I'm doing is making a richer green and getting rid of that yellow with the hue. Uh, the next thing I want to do is go into saturation, and I'm going to take the saturation of that yellow down a bit because I don't want it to be too intense. And I'm going to take the saturation of the green down a little bit as well. The blue is a little bit more of the star of the show. I want the green coming through, but I want to manage them uh, together, right? So if you look at the before, a bit more muted and a bit more yellow, kind of not really a rich green. And now I'm a bit more vibrant and, and I think beautiful green. Uh, and then the last thing I want to do is go into luminance. And all I'm going to do is take the luminance of that green down a little bit. So I'm just going to darken that green, which impacts that whole area. And I'm going to lift the luminance of the blue to make them all a little bit more uh, bright and vibrant. So something about like that. Now that's impacting the sky as well. That's okay. I think it looks good in the sky. You might want to mask that in if it's uh, impacting a part of the photo that you don't uh, want it to impact. But if you look at the, especially the greens there in the grasses, and of course the blues before, and after, I just uh, darkened, made them more richer, more green, a little bit less saturated in the greens, and a little bit of bump and in intensity in the, in the blues. And that gives me a lot of different um, control over the image to take a kind of boring and flat, obviously too dark, spring photo. Gives it a bit more vibrance and pop. But you can use these tricks on any colors, uh, but spend time with HSL experimenting. Try the luminosity trick uh, with the stacking of the mass if you need to. Structure, develop, accent AI. These are all great tools and some of my favorites in Luminar. And that's some tips for editing some spring photos. Get my presets at the link down below. Check out the 30% offer that Luminar is running till the end of March. And I'll be back really soon with more videos. You guys take care. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon. And until then, adios.